Hello everyone and welcome to today's video. Zombies is finally back and it is back with a vengeance. Today, my team and I will be showing you how to clear the nightmare mode. The nightmare mode is relatively similar to the hard mode except that it is much harder. Well, no shit, right? If it's not much harder, then there's no point in having a nightmare mode. So, in this guide, I will be showing you all the changes and strategies you need to use to clear nightmare mode and get your sweet, sweet dark matter skins. With this, let's start off with talent priority. If you remember my previous videos, I said that you should first prioritize your turret damage because your weapons don't matter in zombies mode. Well, that's not true anymore. In Nightmare Mode, there has been a major rebalance by Activision. The Pack the Punch perk and the EMP Storm rebalances the meta such that both your weapons and turrets now play an equally important role. So what I suggest now is for you to prioritize your turret damage, turret armor and weapons upgrade equally in sets of 5. So for me, I added 5 levels to my turret damage first. Then I leveled up my weapons by 5 and now I am working on my turret armor. The reason why I upgraded it like this is because I want to activate the lock talents as soon as possible. Look at how OP they are. If you upgrade your turret damage to level 15, when you build 2 laser turrets, all the turrets on the field, including your teammates, increases the damage increases the fire rate increases by 20% at level 20 and when you build 4 or more laser turrets all turrets on the field have a fire rate increase of 50% for weapons upgrade at level 15 when you build 2 sentry turrets your damage increases by 20% and at level 20 your damage increases by 30% but to me the most OP damage bonus actually comes from leveling your turret armor to level 15. Usually, I tell all my viewers, turret armor is worthless and it should only be upgraded last. But however, in nightmare mode, I want you to look at the level 15 talent. When you build two or more fire grenade turrets, all turrets increases damage by 100%. This is extremely strong and because of this, I recommend everyone, if possible, to upgrade your turret armor to level 15 first before the other two. So, turret wise, which build should you use? Which turret should you build? This is the current list of turrets available for players to upgrade to. If playing in a 4 stack, I always advise this. Two players should build two heavy cannon too because Heavy Cannon 2 has the highest DPS and 2 Laser Turrets 3. The remaining 2 players should build 2 Heavy Cannon, two heavy cannon 2 and 2 Fire Grenades. Remember, the reason why we are doing this build is to trigger 3 effects. We first want to trigger the 50% fire rate increase for all turrets. The second, we want to trigger the 100% damage increase for all turrets. And lastly, we want to trigger the 30% damage increase from your weapons upgrade. This hands is a build I personally recommend if you are playing in a 4 stack. If you are not, it is very difficult to communicate with your teammates. If you halfway through the game you realize that your teammates are not communicating and they are not cooperating, go for 4 heavy cannon 2. Heavy cannon 2, yeah, that's right. Gameplay wise, the first night is already hard to begin with. There is already pulverizers, pulverizers, ignators, and belchers that can easily overwhelm your turrets. In fact, gameplay is so intense that I couldn't even spend time to replace my armor plates when they are destroyed. And this in turn leads to my next point. Before every night, remember to replace your armor plates because during the night, there is simply no time for you to replace them. In zombies, HP works exactly like BR. You have 150 armor health that you have to manually replace with armor plates and a standard HP pool. For me, currently my HP pool of 400 is more than enough, but you can increase it by increasing your HP talents. 
your HP pool replenishes automatically after not taking damage for a certain period of time. But I don't recommend you increasing your HP talent. 400 is already more than enough. From night 2 onwards, things get even harder because of WoW cards. Every night starting from night 2, the game activates one of four WoW cards randomly in the middle of the night. Each of these WoW cards affects the zombies differently. Firstly, the Enhanced Eater Storm increases the speed of the zombies. This makes the zombies move faster. The second decreases your turret's fire rate when zombies attack it. Third one increases the damage output by zombies. And the last one, the EMP Storm. The most annoying one. Periodically malfunctions your turrets for 5 to 6 seconds. This means that the EMP Storm disables every single turret in the map for 5 to 6 seconds once every 30 seconds or so. You can reduce the disable time by hitting your turrets with a wrench, but nevertheless, this is an extremely annoying perk that can cause massive problems for you and your team. There are also some new weapons such as the Tempest and Ray Gun which you can find from air crates, on the ground or from mystery boxes. Mystery boxes have a blue icon and is placed randomly in the maps. And you can tell that when you approach them, there is a blue light and you can spend ether crystals to get a ray gun. But however, I feel like it is not worth it. And even though the ray gun is the most OP gun in the game, normal weapons is perfectly fine and good enough for you to clear nightmare mode. I'll also like to go through some perks that you have access to. Every night at base, there are several vending machines that spawn at your base. They each give you a perk at the cost of some ether crystals. There are four perks which you can buy. The first is a perk that speeds up your time when you revive your teammate. It is worthless and you shouldn't buy it. Decent teammates, good teammates that know what they do, know that know what they are doing, won't die at all. Second perk sends a lightning bolt on zombies whenever you reload, causing some amount of damage. Once again, worthless and you shouldn't buy it. Third perk is basically aimbot, where whenever you scope in, there is an aimbot system that allows you to automatically aim the zombie's head. Once again, although it is better than the other two, I don't think it is worth it, especially if you have good aim. The last one would be the pack a punch perk. The pack a punch perk is the only perk worth buying. Actually, you know what? Scratch that. It's a perk which you must have. What it basically does is that it increases your reload speed and weapon damage by 50% every stack and you can stack the perk a maximum of four times however there are two things which you should be aware of firstly it is very expensive the first time you buy a pack a punch perk it costs 2000 ether crystals and the price increases every stack if i remember correctly to get from the third stack to the fourth stack it causes it costs 6000 ether crystals and to level up a weapon from one stack, uh, from stack one to stack four, it can take more than fifteen thousand ether crystals. Secondly, the pack and perk punch, pack a perk punch, uh, the pack a punch perk, is unique to one weapon. This means that if let's say I am using an M4 and I use a pack a perk, pack a punch perk on it four times. If I drop the M4 and, and, and for a better weapon, if let's say, oh, I found a ray gun and I drop my M4 and pick up the ray gun, I will lose all the pack a punch perk that I have that, that I have accumulated and I must restart all over again. So it is highly advised that when playing Nightmare Mode, you stick to only two weapons, one primary and one secondary. If you don't intend to carry a weapon for long, like let's say night one, you just found a MSMC or you just found a QQ9. If you don't intend to carry a weapon for long, do not invest pack a punch perk on it. The last thing that I want to go through with you is the day three and day four challenges. Similar to hard mode, there will be missions on day three and day four. Last time, we only had the butcher and eater crystal mission, but this time there are two more. First one is called Guarding the Truck. And second one is called the Severus Mission. 
The guarding the truck mission requires you to guard the truck to its destination and kill off any zombies attacking it. If a zombie is near the truck, the truck won't move and if you fail to ensure the truck reaches its destination before the time limit, you fail the mission completely. The new Severus mission is the hardest of all and since I lost the video of it, I'll have to explain to it to you verbally. Basically, you have to guide 10 zombies into a designated circle marked in the map and kill them all. How, because of the presence of igniters and belchers, basically, you know, the zombies that explode and the zombies that vomit, this mission is the most dangerous mission and have the highest fatality rate, which means that you, have, you should send two to three teammates to complete the mission because chances are one or two of them will die. And with this, I have gone through with you all the changes to Nightmare Mode and I'll be posting a full walkthrough soon. Once again, I'm really excited for Zombies Mode and I'm really excited that Zombies Mode is back because my channel finally has some content and I hope that this time it lasts long. Thanks for watching everyone and hope to see you soon. Oh, and by the way, it's actually quite hard to max out your turrets. You have to be really lucky with your materials.